am number four, movie review. A young man with superpowers finds himself hunted by people who want him dead, and yet he still finds it appropriate to fall for a girl and you know, endanger her life. But enough about Jumper. No, seriously, this is a different movie, I swear. For one thing, the people, not people, the beings killing, out to kill him, are killing these aliens in a specific order, for a reason never explained in the film. Also, the lead, his powers, he has turquoise, friggin' blasts of light out of his hands. Okay, I get that Hollywood is spewing these superhero movies out like, you know, they're depending on them to, you know, process oxygen, but still, have we really just reached the bottom and gone through it like that? Anyway, basically, John, number four, is moving from place to place, and so he gets to this new place, selected because his guardian wants to conduct research, and after a few days, he actually starts conducting this research, and John decides that the fact that he's one of, you know, a handful of beings left that might actually be able to stop these other aliens, the Mogadorians, yes, he still wants a life, so he goes to high school because that's where, you know, young people who want to be happy go. Yeah. So, he meets the cast-out girl who used to be popular, the cast-out guy who I swear is Venom Fang X. I'm not kidding, just seriously, look him up. Well, in the movie, he's, you know, he's superstitious. And everybody hates... Okay, it is Venom Fang X, honestly. Anyway, he, of course, gets into trouble with the local quarterback because this movie really doesn't feel like it should leave any cliché untouched. The His guardian is Timothy Oliphant, and this is one of the relatively few reasonably positive things about the film. Oliphant is kind of fun as the sarcastic, overly overbearing, you know, kind of war guardian, not ward. <clears throat> the majority of the film is essentially a high school drama. Yeah, and then eventually the film realizes, hey, the trailer made me look like you know, sci-fi action flick, so the very end of the film is indeed sci-fi action. There's very little build-up, and suddenly it just blows it all on this one brief. It's like a teenage boy, the first time he has sex or something. Yeah. The Mogadorians themselves aren't bad. The design is a bit like, I don't know, Darth Maul, without horns, without red face makeup, and, like, he sneezed really bad, it's like, gill cheeks, I don't know. And the leader is slightly sadistic and not entirely unfunny. There are some nice effects, although there are also a couple that are on the questionable side. The action, when it finally arrives, isn't bad, but frankly, we do not really connect to these characters, so it doesn't really impact us. If the film had consistently had action, you know, not unlike Jumper, 
it would have been more entertaining. Where still, the ending is such shameless sequel bait. It's like the movie really badly wants you to, you know, fork out some more bucks for the follow-up to come in a couple of years, hoping that you'll have forgotten that you don't actually know these characters at all, and that the last half hour of the movie was not indicative of the rest of the movie. The acting is just not very good. The dialogue... You can tell Michael Bay had his hand in producing this. Trailer lines, and they're not even that clever or interesting. The whole prospect of being one of the only survivors from another planet is explored nicely enough through kal -El, I mean, John, but I don't know, it just, it isn't enough. That and the action and Timothy Oliphant are not enough to make this entire thing worth sitting through. If what you want is a high school drama with a brief action scene, well not brief, but it's like a box full of action that just, you know, suddenly the movie realizes, oh wait, I've got some action here. And that's it. You know, no no real build up to these action scenes, just suddenly the movie wants to be an action movie. But if that's what you want, then sure, this isn't as bad as... I haven't watched Twilight, but I hear this isn't as bad as Twilight, but what could be? And while it isn't as bad as that, I also really have the feeling that Twilight is fun to watch and just make fun of, and I don't really think this is the case with this one. It's just so bland, and there just isn't really a lot to it. There's just scene after scene that could easily have been from a completely different movie. You know, a hundred other movies. And I think that pretty well covers the entire thing without spoilers. So yes, that was my review of I Am Number 4. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.